Hi, welcome to the video solution for Adexcel IEL past paper video solution. This is uh, Adexcel IEL June 2019 uh, Unit 2. So let's uh, start. Question number one Which of the following graphs shows how current I varies with potential difference V for negative temperature coefficient thermistor? So it's all about thermistor and we are giving uh, four option, uh, option A, V, B, C and D and uh, all are IV graph. So remember IV graph, first of all, the first and most important thing for IV graph is that gradient of IV graph is not resistance, this is one upon resistance. That means resistance will be one upon gradient this is first thing that you need to keep in your mind next because we have a thermistor and we know that uh, with voltage or with current resistance of thermistor changes so it is not constant that means gradient should not be constant so option a and option b are immediately gone don't need to waste your time reason is IV graph this is a straight line showing gradient constant that mean resistance constant which cannot be for thermistor similarly for option B we have a straight line uh, in this interval showing that the resistance is constant while for thermistor resistance varies uh, as voltage increases or current increases so we need to choose um, either C or D clearly because uh, we have a you know uh, IV graph for negative uh, voltage and the positive voltage you see that the gradient is increasing so the resistance is decreasing and that's what the behavior of uh, uh, thermistor is so as the voltage increases or current increases so resistance must decrease and you see that this is curving up so resistance is decreasing and we also have a uh, same behavior for negative voltage so option must be uh, D question number two which of the following processes um, make use of microwave okay so which one in which process we use microwaves so connecting a mobile phone uh, network indeed this must be our option because in in mobile network in cellular service we use microwave to communicate so option is uh, a but let's just go through rest of the options so option b imaging uh, a broken bone uh, bone of course we use um, x-rays uh, and sterilizing sterilizing we use ultraviolet and testing a person eyesight we use uh, uh, infrared so the use of microwave is uh, in phone mobile phone so option is a question number three the diagram shows wave passing along a section of a spring at a particular time so we have a compressional wave in a spring we have a compression and then we have a rare fraction or expansion so which of the following graphs of uh, displacement against distance along the section of a uh, spring at the, this particular time is correct now generally if you see the compression relation between compressional waves and um, a transverse wave so these positions of compression exactly these position of compression and rare fractions you can consider that these are the you know uh, equilibrium position because at that time particle stays uh, for rest for, for for a moment so you can consider that these are basically equilibrium position so as per given compressional waves we have three equilibrium positions three mean position uh, so if you see that in our corresponding transverse wave we must have we should have or we must have a three equilibrium points if you see A and D are immediately gone because in A we have just one equilibrium and in D we have a two equilibrium points so A and D are immediately gone so don't waste your time we need to think about either C, B or C because in both of the options we have a three position 
and both of them can be a corresponding representation of this compression wave but if you see the left side of the given compression if you move on that means if you compare the region from that fr from the second compression to the refraction so you are about to reach this section is telling you you are about to reach at uh, next equilibrium position somewhere we cannot mention exactly but somewhere we are about to reach the previous uh, you know uh, the equilibrium position somewhere now if you see the option c this is the equi equilibrium position and the next equilibrium position will be will be coming quite you know after a long distance and while in option b you have immediately you have a next equilibrium position which correspond to this a small distance something like that so of course it should be option b question number four a standing wave the uh, wave is a setup on a string of length l as shown so we have a uh, standing waves or stationary waves with three loops uh, which of the following gives the wavelength lambda a typical question of a stationary waves relation between length of the string and the wavelength and the idea is you need to count how many uh, you know loops are there so the easiest way in this uh, string case is you just count number of loops so this is generally we say this is one loop and we have a second loop and then the third loop and remember one loop length of the one loop in terms of wavelength from node to this node is always lambda by 2 so we have a three loops 1 2 and 3 that means in terms of wavelength we have 3 lambda by 2 and which is equal to length of the string so the uh, length of the string l and you can make lambda as a subject so lambda would be equal to 2 l upon 3 this is the wavelength uh, which is corresponds to option b question number five light from a lamp passes through two polarizing filters p1 and p2 before reaching a detector each filter can be rotated through an angle as shown so we have a light two filters and detector and both filters can be rotated in this direction filters initially have their plane of polarization perpendicular to each other the intensity of the light at the detector will be greatest if so we need to find which rotation is uh, uh, suitable for uh, maximum or uh, maximum intensity or greatest intensity at the detector so initially if you see they are saying both uh, uh, filters their planes are perpendicular so now you can uh, start with considering just uh, one vertical line consider the plane and the horizontal line that means they are perpendicular so we have a zero intensity so uh, we cannot see any light here because both planes are perpendicular now if you rotate uh, any one or both in some certain angle so we can have a variable intensity at detector let's check uh, a p1 is rotated to 45 degree and p2 is rotated to 315 so if you see you just visualize rotating p1 45 degree that means uh, the you can just visualize this vertical line rotating 45 degree so you this is one just a reference horizontal line that means uh, when you rotate the plane of polarizing will be at that angle something like that you can imagine so this is the new position of the plane of polarization and next one is 315 so if you rotate let's uh, call this just for reference uh, a and b line and then you rotate this uh, p2 with 315 so 315 is in fact 270 plus 45 degree just to visualize i am giving you that angle so that you can understand so if you rotate till 270 that means uh, B will be here and A will be there in uh, 
270 because for for 180 rotation in this direction b comes here and a goes there and f more one uh, more 90 degrees so total 270 degree this is 270 degree so b there and a is down and more 45 degree if you rotate more 45 degree to make it 315 then your plane of polarization will again in this direction so total angle will be 315 now you can clearly see that both planes are parallel to each other that means this is the position when you have a greatest uh, intensity so option must be a now I am leaving uh, rest of the uh, three for you and you try to you know apply same rotation to see if uh, any of the rotation is coming parallel to each other and uh, I'm sure that the both parallel both plane will not be parallel so we can have only one rotation at which we have maximum so option is a question number six a beam of electrons is directed at graph uh, graphite crystal <coughs> sorry after passing through the crystal the beam is incident on a fluorescent uh, screen where each incident electron produced light uh, the photograph shows uh, the pattern observed on the screen I, this is a typical pattern of electron diffraction electron diffraction so which of the following gives two properties of electrons which help uh, to explain the production of this pattern the one is a diffraction it cannot be polarization indeed of course so just don't waste time so a and b both are diffraction both are correct and of course uh, this is a diffraction pattern due to superposition because you have alternate dark and bright rings and alternate dry and dark and bright pattern is always due to interference or you can say superposition so you have a diffraction and then superposition about you know uh, to getting to get this pattern so option must be b the following circuit contain uh, two resistors of equal resistance and a diode so both have a same resistance value which is not given till here we have a emf 3 volt and a diode parallel to one of the resistors and the voltmeter what is the reading on the digital voltmeter 0 0.71.53 so we we have emf 3 clearly if you see first you need to decide the situation or you know connection of the diode so this is the positive terminal and this one is the negative terminal of the power supply clearly uh, the diode is connecting in reverse bias N that means there will be no current passing through the diode so all current coming out is passing through is straight through the both resistor and both have a same value that means the voltage is divided equally between these two resistor because there's no current in the diode so out of three 1.5 volt there and 1.5 volt in the next resistor so we will be observing 1.5 if current was you know if current uh, uh, would have passed through you know some 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 diode that mean uh, the voltage will be different is it cannot be three a conductor of cross-sectional area a carries a current V the speed of the charge carrier is V the second conductor made of a same material has a cross-sectional area 2a and a carriers a current carries a current 2i what is the speed of the charge carriers in the second conductor so uh, if you see this is all about transport equation and the transport equation is I is equal to N A Q V and you need to find the relation between uh, drift velocity so V is equal to uh, I divided by N A Q because they have a same material so of course n and q are same so you can ignore that and for first conductor you can say that v1 is equal to i upon i1 upon or i upon a 
let's say because this is current i and uh, area is a so v1 is i upon a for second conductor uh, the drift velocity v2 is the area is 2a current is 2i so 2i upon 2a clearly 2 cancel and i upon a which is v1 so v2 is equal to v1 same drift velocity so drift velocity is v that means it stays the same option b question number eight which of the following are the base unit of uh, for the planck's constant uh, planck's constant if you see uh, denoted by h and this uh, constant is given in your formula sheet it is better to memorize the number so that you can save your time but if you don't know if you don't uh, know the value and the unit you can see in your formula sheet so value of h is uh, 6.625 or 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second in this particular question you don't need to do anything about the value because we are not doing any calculation we concerned about the unit so this is the unit of h Planck's constant joule second and we need to find the base unit just replace get rid of this joule and if you replace joule with the base unit so joule is kg meter square second minus 2 it is uh, good to remember these uh, relation joule equal to that or you can find from work so work is equal to force into distance so newton into second and so on and you have another second here so this is joule second which is this and then when you simplify second minus two and second plus one so kg meter square s minus one and if you see uh, kg yeah kg meter square s minus one option is b question number 10 a teacher is talking to a student outside a classroom although they are out of the sight from the rest of the class the door is left open the rest of the class can hear the conversation between the teacher and the students clearly so which of the following properties of the wave explain this this is a typical example uh, of diffraction in fact because the uh, teacher is talking or student is talking whatever behind the door and uh, this door is you know behaving as a slit or a gap and sound waves producing and then diffracting and that's how you can see that the mm, students inside class can hear the voice or sound uh, so it's all about diffraction not refraction not even superposition option is a question number 10 wire wound resistors are made by cooling a length of wire around a ceramic core and uh, then coating the arrangement in pro protective sealant as shown so we have a resistor wire around ceramic uh, wire around ceramic core and protective sealant is there this is the wire show that the resistance of uh, of 1.4 meter length of a nichrome wire of diameter 0 0.05 millimeter is about 1100 ohm and the resistivity of the nichrome wire is given as uh, 1.5 10 to the power minus 6 ohm meter so you need to find resistance and uh, resistivity is given again a typical formula from this relation uh, you have a uh, resistance given by the formula r is equal to rho uh, length by the area and then remember this area is pi r square and we have a diameter 0 0.05 so rho is the resistivity so 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 into length length is 1.4 meter and uh, the area area is uh, this is you know generally I use just to make easy my calculation I don't do radius and some other stuff so basically I'm just giving you idea area is pi 
r square and remember r is diameter by 2 so if you put directly if you need to avoid this additional step I put directly value of r so area is pi d square upon 4 so or or you can say pi r by 2 whole square so you can put it pi r no sorry it's not it's, uh, sorry it's not r it should be uh, d d by 2 whole square so pi and diameter by 2 whole square diameter is uh, 0 0.05 0 0.05 but it is in millimeter so milli is 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2 this is d by 2 whole square and now you can use your calculator to figure out the number once you solve that the radius will uh, sorry, sorry not the radius I'm sorry it is a resistance resistance would be equal to 1069.52 you can round it off 10700 sorry 1070 ohm I'm sorry 1070 ohm which is about 1100 so 1070 or 1100 it's about the same value a wire wound resistors is required with the value of resistance as close as possible to 1100 ohm this can be achieved by using a nichrome wire with any value of diameter and then cutting the corresponding length of the wire explain how a greater accuracy of resistance value could be obtained using a different combination of length and diameter from those given in A so you need some wire with the greater accuracy of the resistance so if you see the formula of resistance R is equal to uh, resistivity length upon area and clearly you need greater accuracy so let's see in terms of uh, uncertainty or fractional uncertainty so a uh, fractional uncertainty in the radius sorry in the resistance delta r upon r is equal to this is constant we don't consider this in uncertainty so delta l upon l plus delta a upon a now delta this is just explanation I'm giving you you don't need to give every reference so delta r which is uncertainty will be delta l upon l plus delta a upon a into r now greater accuracy mean delta r uncertainty must be less and it will be only less if length is greater and area is greater or diameter is greater so you choose the greatest possible length and the greatest possible di uh, diameter so that you have a, a smallest fractional uncertainty and then you have a uh, less or smallest uncertainty in the resistance to so greatest accuracy so the idea is delta r has to be less as per requirement and it is possible only if you see length and area or diameters are you know both are greater so that's how you can explain your reason so in order to increase uh, accuracy delta r must be less so we can achieve the, it by cutting a wire of gr larger length and the corresponding larger diameter Question number 12, Einstein won a Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect using a photon model for light. State two observation photo for photoelectric effect that can only be explained using the photon model for a light. Again, a typical question from photoelectric effect, Einstein theory, particle model of photoelectric effect. We have uh, two main reasons to use uh, uh, photon model or particle model or Einstein explanation whatever they use one is um, uh, 
you know uh, there is a one one interaction between uh, incoming photon and the in, uh, and the electron so photon is emitted by the uh, electron as soon as it hits and then the second important one is uh, second important thing is uh, there is no delay in emission of uh, electron electrons are emitted instantaneously uh, when the light hits the metal surface so these are the two important reason because in um, in wave theory wave theory there has to be some delay in emission because wave takes time in absorption during absorption so according to wave theory electron should be emitted after some time while practical observation is electron emitted instantaneously and it is only possible if photon hit electron as a particle so that's how you can write your answer you can rephrase in your own words part b ultraviolet light is shown on to a clean piece of zinc and photoelectrons are emitted calculate maximum velocity of photoelectrons a work function of zinc is 4.3 electron volt wavelength is 1.2 10 to the power minus 7 meter you need to find uh, maximum velocity so the idea is you are going to use uh, Einstein equation which is uh, energy of photon is equal to work function plus kinetic energy because I'm not writing uh, the symbol for kinetic energy because we need to find fa velocity so half m v squared that's v we need to find uh, so we need uh, energy of photon and work function work function already given 4.3 electron volt make sure that we are doing calculation in SI system so electron volt has to be you know I mean, must convert in joule so first convert let's uh, let's convert uh, the work function in joule so phi is equal to 4.3 and this is electron volt multiplied by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and then answer will be 6.88 or 6.9 you round it off or 7 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule this is the work function and then make v square as a subject so v square would be equal to e minus phi twice of e minus phi divided by m m is the mass of electron so e is um, energy of photon so this energy e is basically hf Planck's constant multiplied by frequency and then frequency we are uh, we are not given any frequency but we have a wavelength so you have a choice you can find uh, from wavelength you can find uh, uh, f is equal to c by lambda or you directly put here so e is equal to h c by lambda in one step so h is a 6.63 10 to the power minus 34 into c uh, 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by lambda lambda is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 7 and then when you solve this you have energy E is equal to uh, 1.657 into 10 to the power minus 18 joule and indeed E has to be greater than phi phi is 6.8 10 to the power minus 19 now you can find uh, velocity uh, after substituting here so V square is equal to twice of uh, e 1.657 1 1.66 uh, 1. Uh, yes e is 1.657 or 66 six, let me make it 6 into 10 to the power minus 18 minus 5 5 is uh, this 6.9 6.9 into 10 to the power uh, minus 19 bracket close divided by mass of electron which is uh, uh, 9.11 given in formula sheet 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 
once you do that you have a v square and take the take the square root so v will be equal to 1.48 into 10 to the power 6 meter second inverse this is the velocity of the electron question number 13 the efficiency of different types of solar panel used to generate electricity varies uh, widely a solar panel was connected to a resistor and placed in sunlight the following data was collected so radiation flux uh, of sunlight 800 watt uh, per meter meter minus 2 which is basically flux f or you can call intensity i i generally use letter i for intensity or flux so potential difference across the resistors is 29 volt this is v uh, current through the resistor is 7.3 ampere dimensions of the solar panel is 1.6 by 0.95 meter calculate the efficiency of the solar panel when transferring light energy to the electrical energy indeed it's a straightforward easy question i guess because uh, the light intensity give you input energy so you can find input energy or you can find input power pi and then electrical current will be your output power and you can find efficiency so let's talk about input power we are given uh, flux or flux radiation flux or flux intensity i is basically power upon area because we have input so i am replacing p with pi so pi would be equal to i into area and flux is 800 times area area is length multiplied by width so 1.6 times 0 0.95 and then pi would be equal to 1216 watt and then let's talk about output power so output power p o is just a symbol v i so v is 29 times 7.3 which is current and then output power would be equal to 211.74 uh, watt and efficiency e is equal to output upon input p o upon p i times 100 if you wish then uh, 211.74 divided by 1216 one, yes 1216 so your answer of e efficiency would be equal to 0 0.17 this is your efficiency or multiply by 100 you can say 17 percent is your efficiency The solar panel was disconnected from the resistors and a digital voltmeter was connected across the solar panel and EMF was measured 55 volt. State what is meant by EMF. Typical definition of EMF. So EMF is electrical energy given to one coulomb or per unit charge so that the charges can move into the circuit. So you can say energy given to per coulomb charge is called EMF. calculate the internal resistance of the solar panel we need to find internal resistance that means small r and we have a equation relating internal resistance and emf e is equal to v plus i r and this is the r that we need to find so r is equal to e minus v just make r as a subject divided by i and r is equal to E is EMF which is given 55 minus voltage voltage is given in the previous part when the uh, the load was connected and it was 29 divided by current which is which was 7.3 and then resistance R 
you can say it is 3.56 or 3.6 ohm Question number 14. A student was setting up uh, audio equipment in a large hall. He positioned two identical uh, loudspeakers a few meters apart and played a note of frequency 300 hertz through the loudspeakers. When the 300 uh, note was playing, the student noticed that the loudness varied at different positions with the hall. A student covered one ear and walked along a line x y a few meters away from the loudspeaker as shown a student walked from x to y he heard alternate areas of loud and the quiet sound explain this observation it is a star question six marks that mean you need to you know uh, write at least six point connecting or rel relating with some physics so this is a typical question typical example of interference of waves so whenever you see the word loud and quiet maxima minima high and low it's all about interference and of course you have a two sources of producing sound a uh, wave so the idea is one wave is coming from the speaker one suppose this is a wave and the other one is coming from the other speaker reaching and then we have interference here so now whether we are going to hear or the student is going to hear a loud or a quiet sound it all depends on the path difference between these two rays so if path difference is n lambda then uh, we or a student can hear a loud sound if path difference is n plus half of the lambda and waves are out of phase so we or a student can hear a quiet uh, quiet sound or there's nothing here here so you need to explain the behavior of phenomenon of interference you need to include uh, the coherent uh, behavior or coherent uh, the, the waves are incoherent and then they are interfering and type of interference depends on path difference so that's how you can explain the whole things and this is the answer that you can write or you can rearrange or rephrase in your own words so observation is due to interference and that means sound waves coming and then they they combine produce loud and quiet sound alternate and uh, because sound they are coming connected with the same source though they are coherent so sound waves are coherent now when the student is walking so it's all depends on the part difference if the part difference is n lambda then and the waves are in phase so we have a loud sound and if part difference is uh, n plus half of lambda and the waves are out of phase then we have a quiet sound Part B, the loudspeaker were then connected to separate sources which were both uh, set to approximately the same frequency. The students stood in a fixed position. He noticed that sometimes there were louder sounds and then the quieter sounds. Uh, because both speakers are now connected with separate sources, even the both sources are emitting approximately same frequency but in uh, for this phenomenon of interference the, uh, if you are using two different sources then these two different sources cannot be coherent so there has to be slight difference between the frequency so again because of the uh, you know uh, a slight difference in frequency sometimes waves are in phase sometimes they are out of phase so that's why at the same position you hear a loud and the quiet sound it depends on the conditions thank you very much 
I hope you understand. Uh, see you in the next part. Have a nice day.